I decided to go to four C's. And I don't think I presented that first year. That was beyond my scope of, I hadn't been to any conferences at that point. So the first thing that I do is look through the program, see that there's a special interest group for graduate students. And I'm like, oh, I'll go network, right? But yeah, I show up to this group and there's like four people in this giant, you know, four C's session room sitting in a little tiny, tiny ring of chairs, right? And so I make my way over and I sit down and there's this guy wearing a poncho and I'm like, oh, okay, that's weird. He's got a ponytail. It's Doug. He will later inform me repeatedly that it wasn't a poncho. It was a what? Serape. A serape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, he was organizing this group. And I have no idea, Doug, who else was in that room at, at, like, at the moment because I knew no one. But I remember, right, I obviously remember you. And you were, you, we were going around introducing ourselves. And I was like, I'm an MFA student. I'm working on some electronic literature stuff. And Doug was like, wait, what? We're getting ready to run a special issue in Kairos on electronic literature. You should submit your work. And I was like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. Like I just barely heard of Kairos before showing up and meeting Doug. So Doug's literally the first person in the entire field <laughs> outside of the faculty members that I've that I were teaching me at, at BCU who I met. Like talk about serendipity. But we walk out of there and we walk into like the foyer where everybody is and like not everybody, like hundreds of people are standing out there. And uh Doug walks me up to these two men who are standing there, and it, I may be re misremembering this, but but Doug introduces me to James Inman, who is one of the co-editors with him at, at Kairos, and Dickie Self. And I don't have any idea who these guys are, right? But Doug says, oh, this is Dickie. He's on the editorial board. He'll probably review your work. So that was my, my first introduction to Kairos was actually as an author and meeting Doug as the first person in the field that I meet, who then immediately introduced me to other people. And that just networked out from there. Um, and then I get published. I, I went back home. I redid my whole uh, hypertext um, in front page. Um, got that, got that published in the fall 1999 issue. Um and then the fall of 2000, I start my PhD program at Michigan Tech with Cindy and Dickey uh, and with Ann Wasaki. She ended up being my dissertation advisor. Um, and I was at Michigan Tech for all of about four months when I saw the call for cover web editors uh, that Kairos was hiring. And I was like, I want to do this because I already had a lot of editorial experience. Um, I was working as a, as an intern at computers and composition at the time. And I was also interning with, um, with uh, three C's because Marilyn Cooper was the editor at the time and she was a faculty member at Michigan tech. So I was doing a lot of brand new entry level work with Scarly, um, Scarly uh, publishing, but I had a lot of history with, with doing different kinds of publishing and editing of other genres in my past. And I was like, mm, I'm going to fly to this. Like, this sounds cool. And that was the spring of 2001. And I ended up getting, um, getting uh, hired to be one of the cover web co-editors uh, with this woman, Beth Hewitt. So Beth and I started co-editing the cover web section in that spring and immediately started rolling out some special issue ideas. And so, yeah, I have been with the journal since 2001 and also counted as my first academic publication in 1999.